your scope statement is one of the most important aspects of your project, particularly in the beginning. And I promise you, you do not want to get this wrong. And in this video, I'm going to share with you six common mistakes project managers make when they're creating their scope statement. Mistake number one, not involving the right stakeholders. Yes, you can draft the scope statement. There's no problem with that, but you should never finalize it on your own. Why? Because it is your stakeholders that you want to get involved because they have requirements, they have needs, they have a lot of specific things that you still may not be aware of and you want to capture it in your scope statement. If you do not do this and you do not involve your stakeholders in your scope statement creation and particularly the finalization, you will have problems on your project. So now let's talk about who are some of those stakeholders. Project sponsor. This is your cheerleader for the project, a senior executive member who is basically ensuring your success and is going to be your go-to person to ensure that Everything that needs to be put in the project and done and delivered on is basically done and delivered on. So this is a very important person you need to vet the scope statement with and finalize it with because they understand the vision, they understand the strategy, they have a lot of information you just don't have. Again, they're high level, they have all that high level information and you have to bring it down into more detail. That's your job as a project manager. So they're definitely one of the individual stakeholders that you need to talk to. Another one is your customer or end user. Sometimes these are two different. So what I mean by this is internal projects inside your organization, which is usually your deliverable is handed off to a different department. Those are your end users. Those are the people within your organization who are going to end up using whatever you're using. Your customer is also an end user, but they usually hired you in order to create something on their behalf and you're going to be delivering it to them. We also have like external end users, which is if you're, for example, creating a software and you're going to have end users, individuals slash customers who are going to be using them as well. You want to get their input. You want to have an understanding as to what is it they are needing, ensuring that you're delivering on all the requirements and laying that out at the beginning of the project to make sure that you are not missing out on exactly why it is they're asking you to deliver on what you're supposed to be creating and delivering on your project. Another stakeholder you have to take into consideration is your team. Yes, your team. But Adriana, you keep on teaching in your program slay project management that the scope statement is something that you create initiation and you may not have your team just yet. I agree. I understand that. However, there's going to be subject matter experts that you can go to who will probably be on your team that you can now be asking them, okay, I have an idea, I'm almost positive you're gonna be on my team, but you're also a subject matter expert on this. Let's talk about what I need to consider from a scope statement perspective. They're gonna have a lot of insight because they're ultimately the ones who are gonna end up executing on that. You're gonna want their input. Another and last stakeholder you wanna consider is a vendor or a supplier who you're bringing in on the project. So if you have a third party vendor or supplier who's helping you, you need to get them involved in your scope statement. They're gonna have insights and knowledge that is going to help you ensure you have a very well-rounded scope statement. If you need help building the right skill sets and knowledge to make sure your projects are successful, well, I have a free webinar for you that teaches the fundamentals that you need to know on project management. I'm going to give you the link underneath this video. Mistake number two, scope statements being too vague. So I want you to think of your scope statement like a goal. You want it to be smart. You want it to be specific, measurable, achievable, uh, relate, relatable, reliable, hold on, uh, realistic, <laughs> timely. Okay, even I don't remember everything, all right? Uh, but you definitely want it to be that because sometimes, well not sometimes, when they're too vague, you then execute the project and you encounter more issues. Now, when there are smart statements for your scope statement, then you can get really specific. So let me share with you an example of a poorly made scope statement, which actually may sound fine, but it really isn't. And then I'll share you with you one that is better. So let's go to the poor one. 
Installing a new packaging line for product ABC by December. So that on its own probably sounds fine. It's actually short, sweet, to the point, you know what you're doing. And in fact, we always say that you don't want a long-winded scope statement. You want it like a quick elevator speech, right? 30 seconds max. However, that does not have enough information. If this is your 30 second elevator introduction to what you're doing, then it needs to have just a little bit more information because that is extremely vague. So I consider that vague, which in essence is a poor scope statement. So now let me share with you one that is better. Install, validate, and train production staff on a new packaging line located in Building H that consists of packaging machinery, which is a filler, induction cap sealer, labeler, cartoner, shrink wrapper, palletizer for the new launch of product ABC by the end of December next year. So you can see how, what a difference it is between the two. And it's not as if the two are that much different. They're both explaining the same thing, yet the second one had just a little more detail. So if I needed to cut and paste that into a document, into a presentation, talk to a senior executive, let my team members know exactly what it is that we're doing, that second one has all the information that literally that in itself is just really succinct and everybody knows what to expect and when and where. Again, the SMART objectives because the goal is to eliminate confusion. Mistake number three, not highlighting the ins and out of your scope statement. Okay, I'm building off of the last point we just did. So you know how I shared with you the better scope statement. I actually threw in there the six pieces of packaging equipment that we were gonna be delivering on. You could, if you wanted to, to make your scope statement a little more succinct and maybe slightly shorter is you could take those six pieces of equipment and put it in your in section of your scope statement. That's really important. This is where you can get all of those detailed items that a lot of people assume or you have to clarify. So I would put in the in section each piece of equipment, the type of testing I would be doing, if there's any travel that I have to do, potentially the type of training that I would have to do. In my out section, which is out of scope, I would probably, well not probably, I would put in things that I would wanna make sure if people assumed I was gonna do that, it was not gonna have happen. Or if there was something that normally there's an expectation that yes, I'm gonna monitor the project after delivery and I'm not for whatever reason, I would make sure that was in there. So this now becomes the supporting role, the best supporting actor role, okay? So your st scope statement is your best actor and your ins and outs are the supporting actor. So that's really important because it provides the additional details without having to jam everything into your scope template, which you'll never remember, but at least it gives you clarity now. And that's going to help to ensure you don't have scope creep. You don't have people working on the wrong items and really more importantly, ensuring your stakeholders don't have the wrong expectations. Before I go on to the next tip, I just want to let you know that not only do I have this free content on YouTube, but I have a online project management course called Slay Project Management. It has all of the templates and tools that you need to be successful, the same tools and templates that I use for my own clients, including the scope statement template that is going to really help you ensure that you don't make the mistakes that I'm talking about here today. The link is going to be below this video. Mistake number four, not defining the deliverable. Okay, you're probably going, Adriana, we're talking about the scope statement. Doesn't that have the deliverable in that? No, you'll be surprised. Your scope statement is like overarching summary of what's going on, but you wanna be very specific with a deliverable. Now, what is a deliverable? It's literally what your end user or your customer is getting at the end of your project. So for this particular example that I gave you, the end that they're getting is they're getting a packaging line they're also gonna get some training material because that was in my ins, 
and that's it. <laughs> that's all they're getting. <laughs> but yeah, there's tons of work that goes into it. This is why it's so important because it was really that specific. They're getting a package line and training material. Those are physical things that are going to be handed off to them. That is a deliverable. Now, if you want to have a little more information, I do have a video that you can check out, which goes in a little more detail around deliverables. Watch it after this video. Mistake number five is ignoring assumptions. Now, sometimes at the beginning of a project, people who are new to project management or organizing these types of activities are gonna go, well, how can I have assumptions yet when I'm just beginning the project? Because I promise you this, every organization has their issues, culture, past projects that you can look upon, that when you're starting a project, you can have some assumptions associated with it. One of the big assumptions I see a lot in organizations is they just don't have enough resourcing. So that's an assumption you need to make that there's going to be some challenges on your resourcing because your organization just doesn't have that much in their stretch thin to begin with. So it's things of that nature, but it's really important to understand what are some of those assumptions you need to highlight. Are people expecting you to do everything? Are you expecting to have certain people on your team? And here's a real life story that I experienced in my beginning stages, which was really monumental changing for me in the way I approach project management is I was in automotive. I had a assembly line that I was working, doing some process improvement on. I knew I needed an electrician, okay, and a mechanic. And in fact, I knew I was gonna be getting an electrician and a mechanic. The assumption I made is I was gonna get specific mechanic and electrician. Bad assumption on my part. Believe you me, I've learned my lesson. So I moved on with the project. Obviously, I wasn't following my slave principles just yet at that point in time, which is, as I said, one of the reasons why I do what I do now, because I like to learn from my past mistakes. And I didn't have a proper kickoff. I didn't document things properly. And here I am at a very important part in the project. And I'm like, great, I need to have my electrician, Joe, and the mechanic, Paul. And I was told, well, you can't have them. I'm like, well, what do you mean? And I got some newbies, which just, not to say that they weren't good, they're just so new to their role and the organization. They can help me out and it really pushed out my timeline. And I got in trouble for that. Actually, I was gonna say something else, a bad word, but I'm not. I got in a lot of trouble for it. And I actually impacted the overall deliverable because I made a really bad mistake and I just assumed. And so in your scope, statement, you want to call out some of the assumptions. You want to, you know, call things out that you know on day one. Yes, assumptions will continue to grow within your project, but in the beginning with your scope template, you want to highlight the key assumptions. So if there's some key people that you need to have and you're assuming you're going to have them, call it out because now everyone's going to be able to read that in your scope statement. Mistake number six, inadequate validation. So what I mean by this is we are known in the previous tip I talk about you want to ensure with your stakeholders that you get information from them to create the final scope statement. That's great. But another part to that is ensuring that all the right players are validating it once it's done as well. So it's, yeah, you're not creating it on your own, you're getting all their input, but now you have to finalize that and formalize it. So your sponsor should be looking at that, your steering committee should be looking at that, all the key senior executives who are gonna be ensuring that your project is ready, set, to go that is going to ensure that it's connected to their strategy. So this inadequate validation of just assuming you've collected the information, you've had these one-on-ones and you've put it all together and you're gonna start running, no, you now have to formalize it with approval. So that validation is critical. It sets the tone and the direction from day one. And don't forget with future project documentation, your scope template is something that you're gonna be building off of. So you wanna make sure that that's properly validated so that you can just really copy and paste it into other documentations like your charter, and that's gonna help you ensure that you have really good project planning. Now, don't forget to sign up for the free project management training that I have for you. The information to sign up for that free webinar is in the link below. Make sure you watch this next video, your step-by-step -step guide on how to create a project plan. On that note, thank you for watching. If you could subscribe, like this video, give a comment, join this amazing community. Until the next time, see ya.